I'm receiving some sort of transmission routed through the main system. Routing. Looking to take a Disney vacation or cruise? Contact Kristen of MagicalJourneysVacations.com. Magical Journeys is an authorized Disney vacation planner. Kristen will get you the best price available and continue to search for deals until the day you travel, taking the worry out of planning your fantastic vacation. Kristen can help plan your dining reservations and answer any questions you may have. She'll even send you maps from the parks. So contact Kristen of Magical Journeys for your next cruise or Disney vacation. Contact Kristen of Magical Journeys at MagicalJourneysVacations.com. So what are you waiting for? Book today at Magical Journeys vacations.com. Wow, that sounds great. I want to go. Well, you can't. Why not? Because we have to stay at our posts and keep rebel scum like him out. Book today at magicaljourneysvacations.com. WDW After Dark. Now, load <laughs> everyone and welcome to another edition of WDW After Dark right here on YouTube and Google Plus for April the 28th, 2015. I'm Jeff Davis, your host for this show. Also joining me, another talking head from the E-Ticket Time show on Sorcerer Radio over srsounds.com. Mr. Eric Allen is joining me as... Well, but it's the SORTCOM review, not each. I was about I to say, say have you have you been listening to Sorcerer Radio lately? The I had the I had your last <laughs> statement before we went live still in my head when we were talking about Bill Clinton there for a second. And I think yeah. it needs to stay there. It probably it does. Probably yeah. not, does. I'm not gonna repeat what he said, but that that, that was stuck in my head. You know, it's like, yeah, I, I can't I can't repeat that. Just just trust us when I say it was <laughs> funny as heck. I had my debacle for the show. I'm good. No problem. No problem. Yeah. No problem at all. So, Eric, how are you, bud? It's a Woody I'm, and Beef show, man. It's a Woody and the Beef show, and and those those are my, those are some of my favorites. No knocks on uh, on Chris and Al John or, or Ryan or anybody else that we have on the uh, on the show from time to time, but uh, you know, it's just like two guys sitting around with a beer, or, or in my case, a what is this? A Seagram's Wild Berry Escape. I have iced tea. <laughs> that's well, about I got that over here. Mine. <laughs> I have that over here too, but it's it, it's uh, that's for later. Mine's not. We are in the one. south, and a glass yeah. of iced tea can never be far away. No, no, it can't. There is always tea in my refrigerator. Yeah. It is a south rule. Pretty there, much, yeah, I agree. You with have you. to be within a certain radius <laughs> of a glass of sweet tea. But uh, let me reiterate this: uh, you can hear Mr. Eric Allen on the Sorcom Review. Tuesday mornings over at srsounds.com along with and go ahead and tell them Saturday nights yes and Saturday night yes I, I'm sorry I thought you were going weren't going to get to that part I was but, I'll let you do it though I am I am so <laughs> oh I am so sorry I are you stepping to, on my feet sir I did not mean to step on your feet, sir. don't step on my feet I am trying to maintain a most respectful distance from your feet sir Okay, all right. I, I, I'm sounding like a person from India, and you're banging the gong on me. It's kind of like... Well, I, they they, they no, use I the gong in that good. country, too. The gong okay. is used in every country. It doesn't matter. Okay, we'll you take know. that. Yeah. But no, I, I can also be heard on Saturday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern as part of Mighty Marvel Geeks. 
Mighty Marvel Geeks. Show for all things Marvel. That's exactly right. Oh, I'm sorry. I should say that in a more heroic verse, uh, voice. <clears throat> Mighty Marvel Geeks, your show about all things Marvel. That's better. Okay, that works. All right, okay. I'll take that. Yeah, good enough. Uh, <laughs> we do. Uh, we are going to have uh, Kristen and Al John with us uh, in some form or fashion, uh, but they do have some travel deals and some information to go over with you uh, via video that they are going to be uh, sending to us that we'll be playing for you a little bit later on. And uh, they're also going to tell you a little bit, an overview about the C2E2 Expo that went on in Chicago this past week. It's a huge Comic-Con convention that some of the big stars, I mean, big stars, kind of like Comic-Con and San Diego show up for it. I mean, just absolutely massive. Al John's got a brief overview. He's going to tell you about that. And we're also going to show you day one, day two, and day three of pictures and some video that Al John was able to capture during his weekend there. So a lot to see during that. We've got Disney Parks news. That's going to cover Walt Disney World and Disneyland. And then Eric is going to give us some Star Wars and Marvel news as well. So lots to talk about. Uh, when it comes to the show this week. But we need to do a little bit of housekeeping first before we do anything else. want to tell you about a couple of our sponsors. One of them, real important, because as of this Thursday, mere hours away, brand new, coming to theaters, Avengers Age of Ultron will be hitting theaters this Thursday and a great way for you to guarantee getting your ticket to see this movie is by using our link to Fandango. Get your tickets right now for your local theater for an opportunity to see this fantastic movie. People in different parts of the world have already seen it, given it fantastic reviews. On that subject, Jeff, yes. Yes. We'll, we'll discuss this later on in the show, but until then, I want you to be thinking in your mind, what you know, what's the overseas tally uh, in revenue on Age of Ultron so far. Hmm. Okay. I, I want you to be thinking about that. I'll think about it. I'll think about that. You know, there's no time. Th this movie is going to be huge. No doubt about that. That's going to yes. be huge. Yes. But, uh, you know, like I said, it's an opportunity for you to guarantee your ticket to be able to see this movie this weekend or whenever because Fandango is the nation's largest movie ticketing service. It sells tickets to approximately about... 15,000 screens and about 1,300 theaters throughout the entire country. You can check out movie show times, tickets, trailers, and other movie-related information. But if you're going to be going to see Avengers Age of Ultron, definitely use the Fandango link here on www.afterdark.com is where you can find that. It just helps out the show. We get a little bit back from Fandango for them. You know, you using that, all you have to do is just click the link, and that's it. It'll take you right there, guaranteed to get your tickets before anybody else does, or before it sells out. That's what's most important. You want those tickets before it sells out, because then you get there, and you're standing there, and you're waiting, and they tell you, sorry, no more seats for Avengers Age of Ultron, and then you're going to no see seats for you. No seats. <laughs> no seats at all for you. No, so I have the clone with me this weekend. I, you better believe I am going to get my tickets off of Fandango so we can yes. see it opening freaking weekend. Because you I do asked not. him, do you want to go see Ultron this weekend? She, he goes, yeah. Yeah, hello. you think? I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, you know, my son, it was exactly that snarky. No, oh, it probably was, yeah. So uh, definitely check that out. And uh, coming up a little bit later, like I told you, Kristen and Al John be telling you about some fantastic deals at the Walt Disney World Resort for the upcoming fall season. But in order to get a hold of those deals and the best way to do it without sitting on the phone for practically four hours like a lot of people did yesterday when these deals came out, what you need to do is use Magical Journeys Travel and specifically use Kristen from Magical Journeys Travel. Head over to my MagicalJourneysVacations.com. Kristen gives you the opportunity to book your vacation without the hassle of dealing with all that. She's going to do all of the hard work for you. Now, that just doesn't include Walt Disney World and Disneyland. That also includes cruising. That's not just Disney Cruise Line. That's also Carnival, uh, Royal Caribbean, all the cruise lines she covers. So if you want to take a cruise, a good opportunity to use Kristen 
take advantage of her knowledge and what she can do for you. I cannot stress that enough. All you have to do, like I said, head over to MagicalJourneyVacations.com. MagicalJourneyVacations.com is where you need to go to get your next vacation started. Also, a couple of other sponsors and housekeeping that we need to take care of. DirectToDrive.com, Halloween Express, and uh, Entertainment Earth as well. All of this stuff can be found over in our sponsor section over at www.AfterDark.com. So, Eric, I know you have got some great news to get to this week, and yes. we're going to get to that a little bit later. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to turn things over to Kristen and Al John. Like I said, they're going to tell you about a travel deal that's going on at the Walt Disney World Resort for the fall months this year, 2015. It's what everybody's been talking about since yesterday morning. And also, Al John's going to give you a brief overview of what happened at C2E2. So I'm going to turn it over right now to Kristen and Al John. I'm Al John. And I'm Marty. And welcome to C2E2 2015. So it's really fun to eat. 
deals from a remote, undisclosed location, right? Yes. <laughs> um, has released a travel deal at MagicalJourneysVacations.com, and uh, we know everyone's going to pick up the phone. Uh, go ahead and email Kristen to book because free dining is being offered at a very limited window. Kristen, tell us more about the deal. Okay, so now through July 10th, uh, can you pull it up for me? Because I don't have it memorized. It's right here. That's my part of it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yes, Aljon, please I am not, click yes, it. I am not, oh, I have I not memorized the deal. That, oh, no, go ahead. Okay, now through July 10th, guess who booked a Magic Doorway package, uh, which includes one of the select resort hotel parts received the Disney dining plan for free. So your arrival dates need to be between August 28th and October 2nd. October 25th and the 31st, November 8th through the 19th, and December 15th through the 21st. So it's even fewer days. Um, if you book a value resort, you'll receive the quick service dining plan, which you can upgrade to either the basic dining plan or the deluxe for the difference in price. Guests who are staying at a moderate deluxe or deluxe villa, they receive the basic plan and you can upgrade cost to do the deluxe plan. Um, there are some resorts that are not included, and these are the ones that are not are excluded from the deal. They're not part of it. And it's the villas at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, Disney's Polynesian Villas and Bungalows, Bay Lake Tower at Disney's Contemporary Resort, Disney's Art of Animation Resort, the Little Mermaid Standard View Rooms, campsites, three-bedroom villas, as well as Disney's All Star, Port Orleans French Quarter, and Port Orleans Riverside, and that's for dates October 25th through December 21st. So even with the resorts, it's more limited than it has been. You have it. Well, the, thank you. Yeah. There is a requirement with it. You have to stay a minimum of three nights with a maximum of 14. You also must purchase a minimum of a two-day theme park ticket with, this is new, either the park hopper or the water park fun and more option. Wow. So. Yes. Yes. Lots I'm, and lots of restrictions. With a lot this. of restrictions with this in order to get free dining, a limited window, and it's definitely the most popular promotion going these days, any days, for the past what, eight years, <laughs> something like that. Since so they started since it. Since they yeah. started it. So, gosh. Maybe it's been 10 years now, maybe 10, 11 no, years. No, it has Because did they have free dining when we got married? No. No? Okay. Well, at any rate, um, please book your trip with Kristen of MagicalJourneysVacations.com, and she'll send you a free quote. It's worry-free, no hassles. She will try to save you as much money as possible, provided uh, you know you give her some time to do so. And the more time that you have to book your trip in advance, the better it's going to be in terms of pricing always right yes. so uh, anyway enjoy that little tidbit um we just ate at boathouse this week next week we're going to report on that as well as some of the other sites and sounds Kristen and i were able to get trader into this week. sam's Grand trader Auto. sam's as well um this week a uh, couple things to plug we're going to have a marvel's uh, age of ultron special part two so a couple weeks ago you may have heard our age of ultron premiere with interviews from uh the cast chris uh, and robert downey jr you had stan lee and this week we're gonna have a couple more segments to throw in there from robert downey jr jeremy renner you had paul bettany as well as scarlett johansson you're gonna hear from those people and a very special guest because i was at c2e2 this past week you'll hear an interview with the man, Mr. Stan Lee. So it's gonna be a really cool Avengers-esque show. And the week after that, you're going to hear from Haley Atwell, who played Agent Carter, as well as Ming-Na, uh, because I was able to get audio from their interview as well. So we're gonna have the the killer women of S.H.I.E.L.D. <laughs> next week on the VDW Tiki Room, and uh, quite possibly a little bit of a trip report as well. So uh, once again, please check out highlights at uh, WDW Tiki Room. Duck, and we'll also make available the entire 
interview and WDW after well, because we're going to put them both on there so you can hear CM Punk's interview, you can hear Stan Lee, Haley Atwell, Ming Na, and there from C2E2, um, uninterrupted. So you're going to get to hear the whole entire panel. So um, without any further ado, enjoy the rest of our C2E2 cosplay and game and and celebrity picture slideshows that I have for the rest of the show. And we will see you next time on WDW After Dark. Now back to you, Eric and Jeff in the studio. Maybe it's Eric and Jeff. Er Eric and Jeff? No, 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 no. Jeff, Eric. Oh, Jeff and Eric. Eh. All right. Back to you guys <laughs> in the studio. And uh, don't forget to buy your tickets for Marvel's Age of Ultron on our website at WDW. Just click on that link to um, Fandango. Fandango. Okay. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you, Al. John, appreciate that information from you and Kristen. Uh, Eric, you know, I got to be honest with you, free dining once again at the Walt Disney World Resort. Uh, some very uh, extensive dates at times right now for you to be able to enjoy it. But I did notice majority of the month of October uh, was not available. And that's that's high time for food and wine time at uh, at Epcot and stuff. Yeah. I kind of noticed that, that. Yeah, they because they figure you're coming anyway. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. You're you're coming for food and wine. Yeah. So we're gonna let you come and pay for dining at food and wine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's the times when you're not as likely to come that we want you to come. Yeah, that, that's yeah. true. But I noticed but, how uh, far into December this uh, this deal also extends uh, quite a ways this time. That all the way up to yes. like the twenty first, I believe it was. That so. that surprised me. That was a that, big surprise. That, that did surprise me because that is sailing dangerously close to the to what they consider the holiday season. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and, and I'm just going to tell you, I've been there on Christmas Day. I don't want to go back <laughs> on Christmas Day. <laughs> it's not that bad. I mean, it's not it's, that bad. But I'm telling you, if you go, you go for the atmosphere because you're sure as hell not going to get on any rides. No, you're not, and th and that's uh, even with your planning via Fast yes. Pass Plus or anything else. Yes, you know? uh, you're, you 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 named the abomination, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I'm sorry. I, I try. I know I how you are about Fast to... Pass Plus. I, I'm sorry. Drink to that. Every time I say Fast Pass Plus, I want you to drink. Okay, so you got to drink again. Uh, like I told you earlier in the show, you know, talk to Kristen and get her to give you the information on these deals, and get on the phone with her and talk to her. Uh, about this fantastic travel deal that's going on at the Walt Disney World Resort. Now, also, don't forget, aside from what you know, Al John told you, a brief overview of the C2E2 also had his day one video of some of the stuff that uh, you know happened there at C2E2. The man had the opportunity to meet Stan Lee. I mean, I saw him in passing outside. He literally, I mean, probably got to talk to him, got a picture with him. and Oh, yeah. Just, I, I thought I was doing good last Friday night with, because I had a chance to, uh, to meet Jack Hanna from, I saw uh, that picture. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so I'm like, it's like, man, this is cool. Cause you know, I, you, I, I love animals. I, I, you know, an, animal kingdom. I'm one of the few people that could spend an entire day in animal kingdom. Um, my dad was a taxidermist most of my life. And I know that just sounds weird, but I, uh, I grew up with a love of animals and, is it is it a different love of animals than what most people? <laughs> it, it is That's an appreciation. Different... Okay, all right, you it's know, appreciation of love. Yeah, um, it's kind of like that's a beautiful beast. One day I'll see the whole thing and not just the head and shoulders. And, uh... <laughs> wow! I love the look on your face when you hit that. That was disturbing, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> if you're, well, not, if I mean, you're not watching the show and just listening, you should have seen the look on my face. I yeah. I mean, but it's, it, yes, I, I grew up the son of a taxidermist. But yes, while other kids were, were out playing with neighborhood friends and, and stuff, I was reading books that he had on animals. So, yeah, that's where it came. So I'm thinking, Jack Hannah, this is cool. And so I'm about to text it to you and to Al John 
and all of a sudden my phone goes off and it's Al John with a pic with with his picture of him next to Stan the Man Lee and I'm like yeah yeah suddenly this isn't quite as cool as it was yeah it's just just it doesn't it's like it's not as um I'm not going to say epic because I mean who you met is just is is a pretty epic person. He's very well known throughout the world. In his, in his context, but yes. no, Stan freaking Lee. I mean, there's not many people on the street that you could go up to and ask and don't know who Stan Lee is. Yeah, to be honest. So um so yes, Al John wins. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does win. Uh he had an opportunity to have himself digitally scanned 3D wise, which was it's just absolutely awesome. I, I'm going to have to try that next time they do that at uh, the New Orleans Comic Con. But uh, it's like it's like Muppet Vision 3D. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So we'll take a look at uh, day two of C2E2 with Al John in just a short amount of time. Uh, what we do need to go ahead and get to is Disney Parks news, and we'll cover that before we get to day two real fast. And I know that a lot of you are aware, but I'm going to remind you, Mother's Day is on the way may the 10th not this sunday but the next sunday is going to be mother's day for all of those fantastic mothers out there who we are all very very appreciative of yes we are so just in case uh you are going to be headed to the walt disney world resort during mother's day there will be meals offered at walt disney's swan and dolphin resorts the restaurants there are inviting families to come and celebrate at the restaurants at the Garden Grove, moms and their families can enjoy Disney character interactions under a whimsical 25-foot oak tree centerpiece, which is very, very nice. From 7 to 10 a.m., the special Mother's Day breakfast menu includes handcrafted bacon. Hello, that should be a Father's Day thing right there. Handcrafted bacon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it should. Hello. Instead of the Father's Day, that should be every day. Oh, very, very, uh, very, very good. I like that. Okay. <laughs> uh, also, open face crab sandwiches, potatoes au gratin, and yogurt mousse parfaits are going to be available. It's very yummy. Additionally, a Mother's Day brunch menu served from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. features herb herb crusted prime rib and some green beans and a couple of other things. Now, prices for the breakfast and brunch options are $35.99 for adults, $19.99 for children, and kids are free who are under the age of three years old. So that's always good. For more information, visit reservations. Call 407-934-1618. A breakfast and brunch menu are also available online for you to look at. Meanwhile, over at Todd's English Blue Zoo, families can enjoy fresh seafood and coastal cuisines from around the world. Plus, receive a $25 gift certificate and a rose for every two adult entrees purchased on Mother's Day. Oh. To make reservations for that, and that's so nice, call 407-934-1111. For more information, visit the restaurant's official website. That would be a fantastic Mother's Day gift to take. Yeah, and it doesn't sound like too terribly expensive either. I mean, no, not at all. Know, the, the 35 bucks or, or so. It, that's that's about what you're going to pay at like a Boma or a beer garden or something like that. Pretty for much. Sure. Yeah, yeah, for the most part, I would think. Yeah, that's probably what it would be. But the mothers deserve something like that. There's no doubt they in my do. mind. Uh, they, they, do. they need to be pampered uh, that day. So if they want to do brunch and then the rest of the day, all they want to do is walk around the World Showcase or the downtown Disney area. Well, families, you need to do that. Follow Take mom. your mom drinking around the world. <laughs> It'll do her good. No, we don't get dr mom drunk on Mother's Day. No. <laughs> I what don't if mom want wants to get drunk on Mother's Day? Well, uh, if she wants to, that's different. She starts in Mexico. She's throwing up by the time she gets to, oh, I don't know, America. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> From having such a good time. I don't know. If that is your Mother's Day gift, good on you. And mothers have fun doing that. For the rest of you, heading to the brunches or the parks, we hope that you have. Uh, a fantastic time doing that. We're going to head over to a couple of the water parks right now. Typhoon Lagoon is going to be hosting Teen Beach 2 Beach Party. It is a party planned from May 22nd through July the 5th. 
to celebrate the upcoming release of Teen Beach 2 on the Disney Channel later this summer. The party, which will be held at various times each day, includes bikers and surfers who dance and play beach-themed games with guests as DJ spins remixes of some retro tunes that will take everybody back to a certain part in their life, I'm sure. Guests will take over Typhoon Lagoon's main beach area and participate in relays on the sand, hula hoop spinning, water balloon, and beach ball tossing, and some groovy dance moves as well that you can check out. So head over to Typhoon Lagoon for all that teen beach fun. You ever been to Typhoon Lagoon? I have. I've been there one time. Yeah. Same here. Liked it. I liked it. it. I, I'm more of a Blizzard Beach fan. Yeah, but I mean, let's face it, you get to swim with sharks. How cool is that? That tank is pretty damn cold, though. I mean, yes. that, that, that's yes. the chilly that, water. That tank belongs in Blizzard Beach. <laughs> yes, it does. It's that cold. Yeah. They should have put it over there in the first place, no doubt about that, because I, I stuck it my, my feet in. I was like, oh. It's just like ocean water. It's going to be nice yeah. and warm and everything else. I stuck my feet in and I, I lost my breath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cold. <laughs> so, I didn't know uh, I was taking the ice bucket challenge today. Yeah, really. No kidding. Uh, and the further down you go into that tank, the colder it gets as you go down. I mean, yes. You're not supposed to. You're supposed to stay on top of the water. But, yes. You know, and, and, I, I and kinda, with your hands. I am down a little bit, you know. And you, boy. You 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 like getting out in the Florida heat after that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> doesn't bother you too much. It is a water yeah. park there, so I mean, cold water. What's the big deal? Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, as you may or may not know, Trader Sam's Grotto officially opened yesterday on the twenty seventh. So now it is there to stay. It's not going anywhere. Not closing its doors anytime soon. Get this though, Eric. Yes. Waits can be up to two hours to get in at peak times. So. If you want to get in for any reason whatsoever, get there early. I mean, really can, early. Can you fast pass it? Not yet. <laughs> They're doing fast pass for, uh, you know, breakfast at Be Our Guests. So if it's that bad over at Trader Sam's Grotto, why not Why not eventually uh, down the road make it a fast pass plus uh, it, option? Disney's going to fast pass everything they conceivably can do. You were supposed to drink twice because I said Fast Pass Plus, and now that's three Oh, times. crap. You did. Uh, yeah. Hang on. Hold that yeah, thought. You forgot, you. you forgot about that already. So it, there he is drinking. Like, good grief. Okay, you can't say it anymore. You can't use the word. But the solution to that is just go get another one. <laughs> that was the last one. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> I should have extended it for a little longer. <laughs> I made you drink it all away. Sorry about uh, that. I got all a few right. sips of tea, though, because, you okay. know, South Rule, you can't be too far from one. That is true. That is absolutely true. And okay. also, uh, Dockside Margaritas at Downtown Disney opened last week as scheduled and on time. So some fantastic margaritas to check out there at Downtown Disney and some great music as well. From what I hear and what I've heard and seen on the videos from people headed over there. So take the awesome. opportunity, you know, head down to the downtown Disney, Disney Springs area because I mean, I don't know which one to call it anymore because it's like half and half right now. Why don't you just call half it downtown half. Disney Springs and just. I like that. I like that. It's, it's, it's paying homage to the old area, and yet we're introducing the new area, that downtown Disney Springs. Thank you, Eric. That was kind of uh, like a Wheel of Fortune before and after thing. <laughs> right. That's true. That's true. I'd like to solve the puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Fans of Fort Wilderness and the hoop dee doo Musical Review can purchase a vintage-style souvenir T-shirt for a limited time. These shirts are only available until next Sunday, May the 3rd, so make sure to get one before they're gone. I haven't seen what they look like, but apparently it's big news because it was everywhere for people to see. So, Can you go online and get them, or is it just getting them at the park? I think right, it's just getting them at the park. I haven't oh. checked out the Disney Parks website yet to see if they are available, so maybe so. Check and see. Just want to let you know. Here's a weird one. <laughs> when I saw this, Eric, I kind of sh- yeah, did the scratching of the head thing where I went, what is the purpose of this and why is it important? Yeah, but I figured I'd tell people anyway. This is my uh, what the crap 
story for this week, I guess you could say in a way. Whiskey Tango Foxtrot story? Thank you. Yes, definitely. There are some new high-tech laundry machines that are now available for guests to use at most Walt Disney World resorts. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that face. High-tech. Yeah. High-tech laundry machines. I okay. did hear that correctly. Okay. okay. Let me tell you about this. The new machines offer live reporting of availability via the Internet where guests can view the status of each machine and receive notifications of availability and when a cycle is complete. You can view the machine status over at www.laundryview.com slash Disney World. <laughs> I mean, this, this is a real thing, folks. This is not a gag. This is real. Laundry cam. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, I guess, in a way. I can be sitting here at my computer, go to this, and go, thanks, I can't <laughs> believe they put that, that black shirt in with all the white socks. That's just going to... <laughs> well, I mean, it's not exactly a cam, but it lets you know the status of the machine as to where it's. If you're in the rinse cycle, it'll tell you. If it's in the spin cycle, it will tell you. That's what it is. So, uh, along with the internet connectivity, the new machines offer quicker cycles to reduce wash time and increase in capacity uh, for larger items. All locations uh, also now accept credit and debit cards in place of coins. Now, coin operation continues at a limited number of locations at Disney's All-Star Resorts, Disney's Art of Animation Resort, the Caribbean Beach Resort, Coronado Springs, Fort Wilderness, Grand Floridian, Polynesian, and the Pop Century. Most reports have already been upgraded with the final locations expected to be complete by early May of 2015. But this was a big move for Disney, you know, putting in these okay. brand new high tech laundry machines. <laughs> oh so, my god! So, so I can just see this at at, at the food court at, at these resorts. They're kind of like, "Come on, bring me my pizza. I'm on the spin cycle. <laughs> Come on here, <laughs> Wait, hurry up!" You know, <laughs> this is I, I had freaking fabric softener. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, is your laundry that important to where you have to have status updates on your phone while you're waiting for your laundry? I just can, I, can you post yeah. them directly to Facebook? I, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, like, Jeff I Davis's share this. underwear <laughs> is in the spin cycle. <laughs> You've got two likes and a comment. I, I don't even want to know what the comment is. Jeff, what are those brown streaks? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Come on. Why? What is the big deal? <laughs> I, just, I don't get. It. <laughs> but, but hey, that that's why we're paying over a hundred bucks a day just to get into the parks. I tell you, it's so, just, so this you is can, where your so, good money goes, people. <laughs> you know? So your boxer shorts can post <laughs> notifications on Facebook. That, that's where it's at. Okay, Absolutely I'll you, nuts. I, I, I'll see your screwy story. Okay. <laughs> and I will raise you another one. All right. Okay. West Virginia. Oh, that's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear the banjo music playing already? <laughs> okay. Now, this was this was posted on April 15th, tax day. A woman oh. is suing Walt Disney Corporation after she claims a rubber chip was implanted in her body without her consent. <laughs> what? <laughs> this lady, I will not, I will not give her name. I, actually, we'll just call her Julie. We will okay. just call her Julie. Good name, Eric. Julie, <laughs> Julie claims a chip made of rubber material has been implanted inside of her without her knowledge or consent, according to a complaint that she filed in March. She claims through intelligence that she has gathered from those who operate the chip, the main owner slash sponsor of the chip is the Walt Disney Corporation. Okay, yeah. Uh, she, you know, she seeks monetary damages and for the chip to be removed from her body. Is she Robert sure Chief. that she was not abducted by aliens? Well, you know, the aliens could have been from alien 
encounter. Okay. Okay. All right. They are in the Disney archives. It, there. it, yeah, it could. Right. It could be Jumba going. I installed chip in her. He will make her a little monster. <laughs> okay. Matter? Now, oh, remember when God. I said this was posted on April fifteenth? Mm-hmm. Seven days later, the woman Julie has already filed a notice to dismiss the complaint. Did she remove the chip? Well, you know, apparently, um, you know, apparently Jumba, you know, readapted her to his uh, flying, you know, flying saucer and uh, and pulled the chip out of her body. This time, hopefully, with her knowledge and consent. This time. <laughs> Um, she, she filed a notice of dismissal, but as of the 22nd, uh, the circuit court judge has not yet signed off on the motion. <laughs> what the crap? So just, just keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. This could still go to trial. <laughs> God. This could still go to trial if, if the judge does not signed off on the motion what, what did she do i mean did she go to amazon or something and and buy a uh like uh, a chip scanner and and scan her body or something that you oh, by the way you can use amazon via www.afterdark.com you know just, okay just say I, i'm thinking may, what probably <laughs> happened is she was standing in the line at walmart she reached across to get something and it beat oh gosh <laughs> i i don't know that's all I got to say. <laughs> that is I, you know, I, 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 used, weird. I used to work for a company that uh, that that was partnered with Walmart, and I had to, I had to, I, I had several WalMarts in my territory. I had to, I had to uh, be a merchandising rep, and I had to service the stores. So there are some wonderful people that work at Walmart. Trust me. Wouldn't it be something if she could use that chip in her body to activate the new high tech laundry machines at Walt Disney World? Just scan her arm. <laughs> Oh, I got energy. it! I got it! It's like, oh, my panties got to get a sw- got it, got to get in the spin cycle. Let me see. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> That's fantastic. Like, oh, I, 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 I want to ride. Oh. I want to ride that Pirates of the Caribbean. Here, where's that, where's that thing? <laughs> That's great. Good. That like, so good. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I got lunch reservations to be our guest. Oh Lord. That's fantastic. I love it. I love it, man. That is so good. <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> we, we, we sure this wasn't Phyllis? Uh, probably not. No, no. Okay. This was, she wouldn't do anything like that. Plus, she is not from West Virginia. She is from New Jersey. So, Got big, it. huge Got difference it. when it comes to West Virginia and New Jersey. She could have been that. vacationing. No, she wouldn't do that. No, no. She It's, it's either here or the parks, one of the two. Okay. Or, no, okay. Well, there. She's not here. She's there. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just making sure. All right. Okay. I am eliminating impossibilities. Okay. <laughs> Let's go ahead and let people know about something that will definitely put a smile on their face if they're a fan of the Be Our Guest restaurant and the new breakfast offering and test period <laughs> that's going on. Uh, it has been extended further into the summer, apparently. Originally announced to be available through June the 18th this year. The test will now run until at least July the 18th, so a whole nother month has been added to this. Reservations are available on the My Disney Experience app, or CHIP, if you want to use that, (laughs) whatever, Uh, and the website as well, along with pre-ordering of menu items. So definitely check that out for the Be Our Guest Restaurant breakfast offerings at the Walt Disney World Resort. Going to move now over to the West Coast for you, Anaheim, Californian folks out there checking out what's going on at Disneyland. Olaf's Snowfest is literally going to be melting away this week. You have just a few more days to catch Olaf's Snowfest at Disney California Adventure before the limited time offering melts away forever. Olaf's Snowfest is scheduled. Help. Yeah, I know, right? It is uh, scheduled to close at the end of the operating day. On Thursday, this Thursday, April the 30th. So make sure you check that out and get the kids over there before it does go away. Some additional Diamond Celebration dining packages are available at Disneyland. Select Disneyland Resort 
restaurants are offering diamond celebration dining packages during the 24-hour party that kicks off Disneyland's 60th anniversary promotion on Friday, May the 22nd. Reservations for the packages, which include priority viewing for Fantasmic and World of Color, opened without fanfare in April and filled up immediately. Wow. No surprise there that people are going to be checking that out. Also, last week, the Disney Parks blog announced that additional capacity was added for some of the World of Color packages at Disney's California Adventure. The online reservation system was not functioning properly at press time, but an operator with the Disney Dine Line said that there were still reservations available for breakfast at the Wine Country Trattoria. Now, we do recommend that you phone the Disney Dining Line 714-781-DINE. That is 714-781-3463 directly to inquire about the specific offerings there. If the seating you were hoping for is full, it is always worth calling back closer to the event just to see if there are any cancellations. And you know, that's a good tip for everybody. If you are headed to any of the Disney parks and plan on going to restaurants, you weren't able to get what you wanted while you were planning your Walt Disney World vacation, call a week before you go. There's a good possibility that maybe that restaurant had a cancellation. Somebody changed their mind and wanted to do something else. It just takes a few minutes to talk to Disney Dining, and they will let you know if there are any openings available. I've done it myself. I actually got in, where was it? Um, Le Cellier, as a matter of fact. This was four or five years ago, I guess. Uh, initially, I'd called to get a reservation, did not have one available. I called that day that I was in Epcot just to make sure everything was still booked up and they had a spot available. I didn't care what time it was. I said, I'll take it. And that's when I had La Cellier for the first time. So I am a good prime example. You can get late reservations if you are proactive about it. So... Little info. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's always a good idea. It's always a good idea, and, and you never know when you'll have something available. It, you can just go up to the, the like the guest services and go, "What do you have available right now, or in the near in the near future?" The yeah. worst they can tell you is nothing. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, that's. The uh, I do. I, I do have something before we move on. Yeah. Uh, Follow up on the uh, hoopty doo t shirts. Fort Wilderness t-shirts. Uh, they are actually pictured on the Disney Parks blog. Yeah. Uh, posted on April 22nd. And they are running April 27th, which was Monday, to May the 3rd. Uh, says, we are releasing t-shirts for adults, women, and kids inspired by Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground and one of the longest running dinner shows in American history. Uh, these vintage style t-shirts were designed by Disney Design Group artist Richard Terpstra. Uh, the the shirt design was inspired by some of the classic theme posters from found around the stage area at Pioneer Hall. So, I mean, it looks like, uh, I'm looking at the shirt right now, it's, it's like a white or a cream color, and it looks like a sign that you would see around Frontierland. Yeah. Because it's, it's got that, it, it's got that look to it. And it says live on stage, you know, hoop de doo review featuring Pioneer Hall players. Uh, there's also a just a more generic Fort Wilderness shirt. It's got uh, it, sure, it's got sure. Mickey wearing a uh, Davy Crockett you know, coonskin hat. And it says happy camper since coon 1971. Coonskin hat. You gotta coon say it like that. Coonskin hat. I'm a happy camper. You gotta, you gotta close your eye a little bit. Coonskin hat. Oh. Skin that was my dinner last night. Now I'm wearing it as a hat. Yeah. <laughs> Roadkill. It's not just for breakfast anymore. That's right. <laughs> oh, somebody is going to take that out of context so bad. That's going to be a sound oh, clip so. somewhere. Probably so, yeah. yeah. But I just didn't want to follow up on that. before. We I appreciate that. Thank you for looking at that information while we were uh, talking about Disney Park News. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. All right, so we've covered all of the Disney Park news so far, but now I want to turn it back over to Al John and Day 2, C2E2. Here is some footage from his second day at the big expo up there in Chicago. Take a look. 
What do you want me to say? Chewy, we're home! Chewy, we're home.
even more great footage from day two at C2E2 there in Chicago with Al John. Lots and lots to see at that expo. Like I said before, some fantastic celebrities. Ming Na and Haley Atwell. God, yeah. The CM Punk. Yeah. Okay. Come on. CM Punk. You're into that. I'm talking like the two lovely ladies because that would be some people's idea of heaven. Um, I would like to see and meet Ming Na. I would love to see him. I would love to interview Ming Na. So if if anybody who knows Ming is listening or watching, Hook a brother up. I'm telling no, we're you. Not ta- we're not talking about Ming from Flash Gordon. We're talking no, about. No, we're talking about Ming Na Wen. Agents Ulan, of S.H.I.E.L.D. Agents yeah. of S.H.I.E.L.D. Thank you. Yes. Extremely hot for her age. <laughs> she's yeah. extremely hot for any age. Seriously. You know, yeah, she's a good looking lady. Yeah. I, I follow her on Instagram. I do too. I do too. And I enjoy it, that. It, I, I tell you what I love about the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. cast. They, you don't, it, it's, it's not, I, I, you don't get the feeling that the studio or the network or whoever, or that anybody is like forcing them to interact on social media. True. Yeah. They it, do it on their really, own. Really, a lot of this, it, it, it's not just them. It's also like a lot of the Marvel Studios, you know, cast from other movies like, you know, Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, uh, and all them. But, and they will interact with each other. The the things that Ming Nod does with, um, oh Lord, I can't remember his his real name, Brett Dalton. But it's fun just watching you just watching the two of them. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, and and Haley Atwell, buddy, the whole time Agent Carter was going, you would yes, I do follow her as well on Twitter, and she would be given mad props to the catering crew or the sound people or just, yeah, just yeah. anybody else, you know, that, that normally would not get the credit. I'm just thinking, dear God, I love this woman. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. I see what you're saying. You're right too. And, you're and, definitely right. And it, yeah. it, it all feels genuine. So either, either all this is sincere or they're just faking it really good. Yeah. Yeah. You're definitely right. Very genuine. Well, we will we will take a look at day three. Uh, that is going to be coming up in just a short amount of time. But before we look at day three from C2E2 up in Chicago from this past weekend, Eric is going to bring us some Marvel and Star Wars news as well. So, Eric, I'm going to turn it over to you. What we got this week? Well, first of all, uh, I know we have talked about it before, but uh, we do want to put in a little bit of Star Wars weekends notification. Uh, starts off in, in like two weeks from Friday, uh, the fifteenth. And if you've not seen the guest list, I mean, you've got James Arnold Taylor. Mm-hmm. Of course, he's going to be there every week. Uh, Ashley Eckstein. You've got uh, Ian McDermott playing the Emperor. You've got uh, uh, Frank Oz voicing Yoda. You've got uh, Dave Prowse. No, no, you don't have Dave Prowse. I'm not, I'm I'm thinking of uh, Peter Mayhew, who okay. plays Chewbacca. Yep. And, and every week, it's somebody who uh, voices some character for Star Wars Rebels. So it's it, it, it's a good lineup. You've got your your got your dining. You've got uh, your uh, I don't remember the name of it exactly. This the uh, the, the Sci Fi Dine In Galactic Breakfast at uh, the Sci Fi Dine In Theater. And then you've got right, Jedi right, Mickey's yeah. uh, Star Wars Dine at Hollywood and Vine. And, you know, they wouldn't be bringing that back if it didn't go over very well last year. That's a good point. That is right, yeah. So, so yes, we have that. Um, but something that you and I have not had a chance to break down because we were not available when it came out. Uh-huh. The new Star Wars Episode Seven trailer. Oh yeah, what what yeah. what was what was your reaction? Yeah, a, a little backstory on that. Uh, I was outside work that day. 
Yes. While Star Wars Celebration was going on. And a friend, me and a friend of mine were talking about, uh, you know, big thing that was going on, you know, all the people that were there and probably all the stuff that you could see and everything else. And he had mentioned to me, he's like, you know, there is another trailer coming out soon. Uh, he's like, yeah, you know, and not 20 minutes after me and him had that conversation, I was went back upstairs. I started getting notifications on my phone. My phone just started just going uh -huh. nuts like crazy from Facebook and Twitter. And, and was, what is going on? I look at it and brand new trailer, teaser trailer for Star Wars. Yes. And so everything at work stopped. Yes. I mean, right then and there, everything stopped. And when I saw that trailer and I saw Han and I saw Chewie, you knew where they were standing. You knew what they were talking about. Dude, the smile on my face from yes. ear to ear was, it was epic. I mean, I, I, absolutely yeah. Epic. I, I was you, so happy. You you uh, you you hear women talk about three little words, three little words to just make a to make a woman's day. I tell you what, the same thing. The, the three little words for a man, Chewy, we're home. Yeah, yeah. That, or, you, you either that it. or I've got bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the Pretty other good. three little words that'll make a guy's day. But if your guy is a Star Wars fan, Chewie, we're home. I mean, God, that just put that put goosebumps all down. It did. It, it, did. it, it did. Yeah. And just looking out there, seeing Darth Vader's helmet and thinking, well, he didn't burn down all the way, did he? Um, which. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was clamped on to a guy that had just been burned in lava. You know, so you know it's got to be some kind of flame resistant, but um, but that was kind of a powerful image because that was, uh, and there was a lot of debate over. Well, does that mean Darth Vader's guy? Because he's using he you know Luke. That's Luke's voice, and you know he's saying my father has it, not my father had it. And I'm like, dude, that's just clipped audio from Return of the Jedi. Because when he's talking about, uh, he's talking to Leia about the Force, and basically, you know, dropping the bomb. Hey, Leia, by the way, you're a Jedi, and not only that, you're my sister. Never to mind the fact that, like, <laughs> you put a vi pretty vicious kiss on me there in Hoth, but you know, hey, we're, we're brother and sister now. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. But seeing the the crash star the destroyer. It makes me wonder why the Falcon was flying in there. I mean, could this be somebody's base? Could this be where Han and Chewie have been living lately? Uh, it, I don't know. I, it, that's another unanswered question. I mean... This is this is going to be a, a a a heck of a wait until December when we actually get to find this stuff out for ourselves. It 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 is it is, and I and I also I, I kind of dropped out a couple of times while you were talking about it and everything because I guess I had a connection issue for a second. Yeah, that's um, why I kept talking. Okay, <laughs> Ho hoping that you would. Hoping that you would make your way back to the good side. Yes, of yes, I, I, I did, I did. Um, hearing Mark Hamill's voice, yeah, it did it for me. What I found interesting, though, is when he said, "My father has it." Yes, almost speaking in the present tense. Okay. This was, I, this, this was this was one of the parts where you where you dropped out. Okay, because I did I did mention that. Is that, that is that weird to me, or is it weird to that, you? Or it is not weird to me. Once I figured out that is clipped dialogue audio from Return of the Jedi. Is it exact audio yes. from? Did you go back and listen to it? Yes. Hmm. Yes. Okay. 
Yes. If, if Vader's coming back, it's as a force ghost. Okay. I, I, I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. And how is it that he's not burned away all the way? How is it that that helmet is still there? And that, I mean, all that I mean, he should be ash. Well, he there. probably was. But just remember, this this outfit was originally clamped down on him right after he got burnt in the lava. Yeah, it's probably flame retardant. Mm, could be. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, one thing, one thing I did not mention while you were dropped out. Um. Uh, the lightsaber that gets handed off when Luke says, my sister has it. Yeah. That was not a human hand. Okay. No, that was not a human hand. But that was identical to, to Luke's Skywalker's freaking lightsaber that got cut off with his hand in, in Empire Strikes Back. Anakin Skywalker, his lightsaber. It was his it was his lightsaber that was given to Luke and then got cut off and dropped down the shaft. Mm -hmm. Now, people are saying, how can that be? Because that fell down the shaft. Well, if you were reading if you read the Thrawn trilogy of books by Timothy Zahn, who by the way is a huge Incredibles fan, I found that out when I got to meet him. Yeah. All right. He played that self same scenario that the Empire had recovered Luke's hand and his lightsaber from Best from Cloud City. And they used the hand to make to grow a clone of Luke. Wow. Yes. Wow. So so now, uh, now so, think yeah. about this. If that truly was Luke's original lightsaber, if they actually recovered it from Cloud City, if they also recovered Luke's hand, could this guy that's been running around with the red lightsaber with the three pronger things on him? Could that be a clone of Luke? Oh, wow. Like a ah. younger version. Ah, think about it. Mm. The new Sith yeah. Lord, the, the, the Lord of the Sith or the bad guy, whoever it is. Yeah. What if this is Luke's clone? Just food for thought. I'm not saying this is the case. I'm not saying I, I do not have a crystal ball. I, all I am saying is that there's precedent that supports that theory. You are putting way too many thoughts in my head right now. You're putting way too much for my little pea-sized brain to wrap around right now when it comes to Star Wars. That's way too many questions. Way too many. I mean, oh, that, uh, yeah, that is... I'm just saying it could. Yeah, it could. It could. It could. Yeah. Saying it could. Um, so, um, speaking of Star Wars, as I transition. A, well, real quick, what about Battlefront? Did you see the, the footage for Battlefront? I saw the bet footage for Battlefront. I love the look of what I see. They're still there. They haven't released enough information for me to get a, a good informed opinion as to whether or not I, you know, I, I can recommend you buying it, you know, on release day. Yeah. Uh, it's like, you know, how many, how many maps are there going to be? Is there going to be a single player campaign mode? Is there uh, going to be space battles? We don't know. No, no space battles whatsoever. No, there will not be. Yeah, but it, it's still, it's still a ways off. Right now, no space battles. Yeah, I there mean, is with plenty the, with, of time to change the mind. There's about, I think, maybe six or seven maps to play on. Yeah. Um, everything will be an online experience. There is no per se single, you know, player campaign that's going to be part of this. You will always be part of a team. You will always have other people playing with you. It reminds me, in a way, of what was the name of that game that came out with the big robots? 
last uh, year. Pacific uh, Rim. No, not the, it was the uh, game. It's sort of like the movie Princess of Grimm. Um, um, Titan, Titanfall. Titanfall, thank you, yes. yes. The campaign that you played on Titanfall is, from what I understand, also the type that you will play on Battlefront. There will be certain sections that you can com- com- uh, complete uh, to give you the storyline, but you're doing that with other people online. There will be no offline type of you know campaign that you can play. I still say, yeah, I've I've heard all this. I've heard all this, but yeah. because it's still a ways off, and it is, it, and it is, there are there is a good bit of pushback coming from the the gaming community. Yeah, yeah. I, I I'm cautious to say it won't happen because it may happen. It's a possibility. It, it, yeah. it is possible. I mean, it, it 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 might happen. It might not. But there's still plenty of time for this to happen if they change their mind. That is true. And and what, there's one thing I can let our viewers and our listeners know that if you have seen the trailer for Star Wars Battlefront, and you sit there and say, "Well, that looks too good to be actual in-game footage," do not be mistaken. What you saw in that trailer is actual in-game footage because also there was a five-minute video played of actual gameplay in first-person mode. And I'm telling you right now, whether it be a PC that you're using, an Xbox One, or a PS4, those are the graphics that you're going to get. They're slightly enhanced uh, simply because this trailer and gameplay, from what I understand, was... and telling you that that is what you're going to get when you pick up the game uh, later on this year. That's what the graphics are going to look like. Just absolutely epic. It's some of the best graphics I've ever seen come out of a game. Yeah. I mean, truly, they've taken their time, and and they we hope that they've done the best job possible. But it's like you said. As we get closer, we'll know more information. But I just wanted your take real quick on Battlefront. I'm hoping that it's going to be more like Destiny. Could be. Where, it could be in a way. You can play, but I mean, but there's other people about. I, I really would like that better than than Titanfall. There was one disappointing fact that I did learn uh, after yes. that came out, and more information came out. When you're controlling the uh, ATAT, the at at, like specifically on Hoth. Yes. It it is not a free roaming vehicle, from what they are being told that. That is on a track. Yeah, and yeah. You, you can pretty much on rails at that on a rail point. system to where you can only move forward. You can look left and right and up and down and stuff, but you cannot free roam when you're inside of that huge, massive thing. That's probably uh, for the best, all things probably. considered, because you saw how they maneuvered during the movie. Yeah. They were not performance machines. No, but you have to balance the gameplay between yeah. the Empire and, and and the Rebels. You can't just have the Empire just destroying everything with one vehicle and nobody can do anything. You right. have to level out the gameplay. And I think that's why they probably did that mm-hmm. with those specific vehicles and keeping them in one spot so you can't just go stomping on everything, you know. Yeah. So um but, uh, but I'm I, I now have a reason to want to get either an Xbox One or a PS4 now. I have a reason, and that w- it's going to happen. It's going to well, happen. You go. Here, you know? There you go. I, I, what, I, I, what was your other news? I'm sorry to uh, interrupt my other you news. That. My other news is let's see. Uh, it's about Disney Infinity. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all, apparently some product packaging images got leaked out on the internet. Uh, through the retail, uh, overseas retailer uh, Taobao. Uh, Taobao? Taobao. T-A-O-B-A-O. Taobao! Yes. Um, okay. These are figures for Disney Infinity 3. Not just two, but three. Now, these figures uh, are of Mickey, classic Mickey, not Sorcerer I saw, Mickey, I saw but that, Mickey yeah. wearing the short red pants and, and shoes and gloves and nothing else. 
Mm -hmm. uh, also had Mulan, Olaf, Minnie Mouse, Come on, say uh, it. five characters from the Inside Out movie. Say it. Say it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And Sam and Cora from Tron Legacy. Those are the Disney ones. Come on, say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Also, come on. A line of Star Wars figures will be part of Disney Infinity 3. Keep on going. Keep on going. Come now, on. Disney has yet to announce any plans for it. Uh, as a matter of fact, some of the sites that have posted some of these pictures, some of this information, uh, they've been ordered by Disney to pull it. I mean, it, it took some work to get, you know, to find the articles just just now. Yeah. But think about it. They are confirming Star Wars is going to be part of Disney Infinity 3. Along with Mickey and Minnie, Mulan and Olaf, and Sam, Flynn, and Cora. But, but did you also see the pictures of Han Solo and Indiana Jones? Those did not appear to be official because I've seen them float around. That's concept art. But, but it could be it could God, be for 3.0 though. God, if that happens, <laughs> that would be so freaking epic. Would you be more excited for Han or for Indy? You know what I would be excited for, Jeff? Both. Oh, and yeah, it's definitely both. No, no, no. But no, if, here's the reason why. Here's the if reason. Dis why. If Disney asks you, they say, Eric, we're giving you the opportunity to choose either Indy or Han. Which would you I be would go to? with Han. I would go with Han. But at the same time, I, I, the, the reason that I would go for both, I, I want both. I would, I would go for Han first if, if I had to choose. Yeah. But if you've noticed in Infinity 2.0, all of the Marvel characters know each other. They all recognize each other. Yep. You all guys, like, you know, we, we, got, we got Loki for, the, for, for Mac uh, a few weeks ago. And so we put him in, we're playing around in the toy box. And just for fun, I put Thor down there with him. They're talking to each other. It's like, hey, hail, brother. How goes your uh, fight against evil? Or something like that. <laughs> but, but yes, it is, they know each other. And I'm just, I'm, I'm pumped for the idea of what yeah. Han and Indy would say to each other. Yeah, that would be something. Yeah. And, and, and Disney, if you're listening, please have them look at each other and at the same time going, don't I know you? <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. That, I, I think, I like that. Be, I like that. Would, would just be perfect. Yeah. Um, now, as far as, uh, in addition to Disney Infinity, um, Disney Infinity Toy Box 2.0 uh, is now available on Android platforms. Uh, let's see. You, you know, what, what you can do is you can try three characters for free. Uh, now, they rotate, they rotate through the selection often. Mm -hmm. uh, you can build toy boxes faster with new tools that make it easier to create and customize your own worlds. And this sounds pretty much like what was available in the console versions. Uh, you can customize your interiors again, like you can in the console version, uh, you, and you can unlock. You can use web code cards from your physical Disney Infinity figures to unlock characters in the game. But this is uh, it is optimized for mobile. Uh, it will t require up to three point four gigabytes of disk space. Wow! So make sure you've got a good sized card in there. Whoa! <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah. that's quite a bit. Yeah. My goodness. So there you go. Wow. Okay. But uh, anyway. Oh, crap. Dude, I hate to do this, but 
Can we talk about something? Can you talk about something? I got to go check something. Yeah, sure. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. All right. So going back real quick, uh, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, Battlefront uh, to everybody. I, I watched a lot of videos when it comes to Battlefront. And uh, I have yet to see any of the in-game footage that they did put out. Like I told you, at Star Wars Celebration, they did do a five-minute video of actual first-person gameplay. From what I do understand, it is first-person and also third-person, so I'm guessing that is an option. But there's also going to be different you know, star characters that are going to be playable via Battlefront uh, as well. If you watch the trailer, you notice there is Darth Vader. He does show up in the trailer. So obviously he is going to be a playable character. Also, Boba Fett is seen in the trailer, but they are also saying that there are other key characters from the Star Wars universe that will be available in this game. So it could be Han. It could be Luke. There's just no tell. Maybe Yoda is involved. Who knows what the possibility might be when it comes to being able to play characters. Now, when it comes to vehicles, yes, the Millennium Falcon is available to use during Battlefront. Is it going to be available for everybody right off the bat? Hard to say. I'm really not sure. The Millennium Falcon may only be available for certain types of maps or certain missions uh, and different stuff because the problem would be if you were to make it available all the time, like specifically the Millennium Falcon in Battlefront, what you would have if you have, let's say, a 12 versus 12 type of situation on your map you would have 11 people waiting in the specific spot where the Millennium Falcon would spawn at and nothing else would get done. So I'm sure EA is probably going to figure out a way to deem somebody pilot of that when it becomes available by random selection. If you die at the right time or whatever, or you spawn in a certain location, it may be in front of you. Who actually knows? But like I said, other playable characters, not just... You know, rebel forces, not just Empire, you know, stormtroopers, but certain key characters that are also going to be available to play while you're in Battlefront, while you're playing this game. It's going to be an epic game, ladies and gentlemen, seriously. Yes, kids, I, I, I think it will be. It, it, your kids are just going to go nuts over this. Is this going to be a number one item for probably the holiday season? You yeah. bet it will, simply because not only do you have Battlefront coming out, then you've got the new Star Wars, The Force Awakens coming out. Around the holiday season, kids are going to be going nuts over anything Star Wars whatsoever. So as more information becomes available on The Force Awakens or on Battlefront, especially with D23 coming up and everything, we will be letting you know here on WDW After Dark. Eric, go ahead and continue with what you got, man. Okay. I do apologize for that because uh, in, in case, you know, you viewers, may, viewers, listeners may not know. I, I do live with my grandmother. She is, uh, she's getting kind of on up there, and um, I, I'm, I'm here for peace of mind and also to help her out. And um, I thought I heard something that, that said I needed to go check on her. So, but she's no good. problem. She's fine. No problem, man. She's you do fine. what you got to do. That's yeah. all right. So, anyway, where was I? Oh yes, um, on the Disney Infinity on the Android. Uh, Yes, this is going to be for phones and tablets running Android 4.4 and higher. Uh, now, you can, of course, spend money on this. I mean, you could spend from 99 cents to 60 bucks on it. But, uh, but still, to have it there, like say, if you've got a tablet or if you're like me and Jeff, we have the Samsung phones. Yes. S5, S5 Active. There you go, baby. You have, what do you have? S S5 Active. Yes. Okay, I got the S5 Active too. Funny, we're like phone twins. Usually. We are. We've been phone twins for a f quite a few years now, as a matter of fact. Yes, actually. yes. And and it's all thanks to you for showing off that beautiful, big honking note and uh, making me <laughs> want one. <laughs> I converted him. <laughs> yeah, he pulled me to the dark side. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, another uh, story about... Uh, Disney and video games. Uh, Jeff, if I were to to hold this character up to the camera like I'm doing now, would you recognize this guy? I can tell you he's from Minecraft, and that's about it. Well, good, because that that is what 
I'm going to talk about next. Uh, it is the uh, the game Minecraft. Have you have you played it? Have you have you seen it? I did the free version and deleted it. It just didn't okay. hold a uh, a candle for anything for me at all. Well, Jeff, what if I were to tell you that through the magic of Minecraft, you could go visit the Magic Kingdom? I would tell you I can practically do that already on Disney Infinity, and it looks a lot better. Well, however, get, considering the popularity of Minecraft, there is a website out there called MC Magic. Uh, website is mcmagic.us. Mm -hmm. This is it, it, basically you had a group of. Uh, of Minecraft users who were big Disney freaks as well. So a bunch of them got together, uh, really over a hundred people making this. Now this is a cube from Minecraft. This is, it, it, they, they took it on the basis to being one meter across one meter one meter one meter they made Walt Disney World accurate to a one-to-one -one scale with these so oh, wow. Wow. so if you figure Tower of Terror being a hundred and ninety nine feet tall that's like you know 60 meters or so it's 60 blocks high Hmm. So basically, one meter in the real parks is one cube here on this server. Now, they have done Magic Kingdom, they have done Epcot, they have done Hollywood Studios, and they have done Animal Kingdom. They have also done some of you know a couple of the resorts, Contemporary, and I want to say Grand Floridian. Uh, they have also done one of the Disney Cruise Line ships. Wow. Now, when I say done, I don't mean just simply we put a bunch of bricks together. They have also come out with a resource, you know, two resource packs. So if you want to go there, this, this will make it even better. A, a texture pack, so all the blocks will have, like, authentic-looking Disney textures, like, you know, the Cinderella's Castle. It's that stone with that kind of blue roof. Uh, and they have an audio pack. So when you step into Tomorrowland, you hear Tomorrowland background music. Wow. You you step into... Uh, you go, and, and they have built attractions as well to where you can ride through attractions. Space Mountain is awfully, awfully good in this. Yeah. And you will hear, let's like say, if you hit, go on uh, Haunted Mansion or if you go on Pirates of the Caribbean, you will hear the audio. Uh, and, and it's true, like, you know, Spaceship Earth and, and, and Test Track. Yeah. So it, it's, even if you're not a huge Minecraft fanatic, mm -hmm. this is still impressive just on the sheer scale and the amount of work that they have put into this. Obviously, yeah. Yeah. And, and it, this this place has thousands, thousands of uh, of um, of members and you the, you can't get on there if you're on Xbox or PlayStation versions. This is only available if you have gotten the PlayStation, uh, not the PlayStation, but the PC version. mm Mhm. So, and one thing that they are working on now is a retro version of Magic Kingdom from 1975. Wow. So it's not, you know, you've got the Magic Kingdom of today, but you are working on one from 40 years ago. And I think that, yeah. So... That is pretty much all I've got for video gaming. And again, if you want to, if you're if you're on Minecraft, you want to check this out. It is mcmagic.us. 
or if you just want to take a look, uh, you know, they've got tons of YouTube videos. People go in there and, and record all the time. They love it when you do. Yeah. So you've got plenty of walkthroughs. Uh, I, I think the one that I've watched most of was Rob plays that game is the, is the YouTube guy. But uh, he walks around. It looks very, very impressive. But uh, one final thing before we, we go back to, to Al John's day three. Uh, you remember when I asked you earlier, Jeff, about Age of Ultron to uh, figure out, to, to think about how much it is pulled from, from overseas from, uh, from just last weekend? Just so far, you know, not no U.S. release, no nothing or anything else. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. You've got, you've got an actual number, don't you? I, I have an actual number. Okay. Lay it on me. What what do you think? Just give me a ballpark. Uh jeez. Uh <laughs> I can't even begin to imagine. Um twenty two million. Okay. According to Deadline Hollywood, story posted Monday, which would have been yeah. yesterday. The five-day tally overseas in 44 markets, 202 million. Good. 200 point God. million. Oh, my. Yes. Oh, my God. That is ridiculous. Yes. I was being just, you know, I couldn't even begin to even think that it would be close to, wow. Yes. 20. Oh 200.2 billion. Wow. Now, wow. This 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 take exceeds the opening of the first Avengers film by 44%. Wow. That is a and it's it, it beats Iron Man 3 by 24%. Crap. In the same sh same suite of markets. That's unreal, dude. That is seriously just crazy. Yes. Wow. Now, now think about this. Yeah. Think yeah. about this. This is this is Mike mainly in Europe. Uh, and this is in some independent German theaters. They reportedly boycotted the film uh, for what they say is a rental fee dispute. But just just th think about all right before before you before, if that doesn't make you just sit back and go holy crap just remember this it has not yet premiered in you in the U S which will yeah. be on, on Friday yeah has not debuted in China wow has not debuted in Japan and has not debuted in much of Latin America. Now this past That's weekend crazy. we're like France, Italy, Germany, uh, England, Russia, Australia, Korea, Argentina, and Brazil. Yeah. I, 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 it's just, that's correct. The two yes. over two hundred million already. Yes. Now just just to to give you some so, some yardsticks here. Um, Iron Man three racked up eight hundred ninety six million total international box office. Thor: The Dark World uh, racked up four thirty nine million. Captain America: Winter Soldier four fifty five million, and Guardians of the Galaxy racked up four hundred forty one million. And that was total at, after total all the releases. international box office. Wow. Wow. Then this this one's it's <laughs> Yes. Oh god, is Disney sitting on a gold mine or what? You know? I, god. Disney knew what it was doing. Yeah. Yeah. And they knew. And this and you hear in certain niches of the fan bases for for Star Wars especially that that 
oh, Disney's going to ruin it. Disney's going to ruin it. It's going to be crap. It's all going to be frozen stuff. Uh, I remember those comments. Yeah. You remember yeah. those comments from, from Star Wars. You heard a lot of it from Marvel. Yeah. You don't hear that much now. No, you don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't. Because Disney and this, I will give Bog at Biger all the credit in the world for this. The minimum of interference business model that he adopted with Pixar and what he has adopted with Marvel. Yeah. And really, incidentally, what prompted George Lucas to actually sell Lucasfilm to Disney? That minimum of interference model. It, it has paid off so freaking much because. By and large, you let you let the company do what they do best. Yeah. You produce, you distribute, you market, and let them do more or less, you know, the the day to day stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You don't try to micromanage because yeah. Eisner was bad at that. And I I think you have a winning business model. And so far, so far, it's it's been a whopper. Yeah, yeah. I, that's <laughs> yeah. That's really, really something. That's so, th th that's amazing. So yeah. So I'm I'm going to be interested to. I, I, I'm probably going to want to come back next week and just say, well, this is what the the Avengers opening weekend numbers were domestic." And I will be shocked if it's not if if it's if it's under a hundred million, I will be shocked. Yeah, yeah, true. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. And and real quick before we get to this uh, last video for C two E two, don't forget tonight, as of tonight, this day, April the twenty eighth. Yes, Marvel Agents of Shield tie in. Two Avengers Age of Ultron. So if you've been keeping up with this show, you're going to see a tie-in from this week's show into the movie. And if you haven't been keeping up with this show, first of all, shame on you because season yep. two has been Bad. pretty freaking awesome. Yes, it has. Yeah. Um, though I'm just going to say, I'm getting kind of tired of the enemy within story arcs. Mm. I just am. Mm. But... First of all, before you go see Age of Ultron, go get on Hulu and watch this whole season. Yeah, that's what and I would get recommend. Caught up because you because trust me, if you just see tonight's episode, which we are currently missing, but we will be using <laughs> for we'll you be watching on Hulu. <laughs> yes, we are sacrificing our Agents of Shield watching for you, but I appreciate it. Yeah, definitely, definitely see yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, catch up and and watch the show. You, you will need to watch the entire second season up to this point yeah. for everything to make sense. Yeah, definitely, definitely so. Which I'm glad to say that I've been doing and yes. staying nice and uh, yes and up to date with. So. Yes, it dragged through the first half of the first season. We understand. We admit that. We we concur. But once once Winter Soldier came out in theaters, it was like boom. New show, completely different show. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, Eric, good stuff, man. Thank you, thank you very, very much. That's a, a, that's outstanding news for this week. I can't wait My to uh, talk about it a little bit uh, next week uh, when we come back yes. for WDW After Dark. We got a lot to talk about next week. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the final day, day three with Al John, C two E two. Up there in Chicago, take a look at this footage right here. This is Al John Go of JediMusketeer.com, and this is Z2E2 2015, Day 3.
And that wraps up the footage from C2E2 in Chicago with Al John, day three. Some gaming, some cosplay, a little bit more involved in that video. And Eric, it definitely looks like uh, Al John outdid himself and had a fantastic time. He met more day. people and had a greater experience in, in a weekend that than, than most of us do all year. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But the good thing about it is that's not all that we have to offer you. Also, there is going to be some bonus audio podcasts that are going to be released after this show featuring 
Stanley, of course, which everybody's going to want to listen to. And also, yeah. And also, former WWE superstar and current UFC fighter CM Punk. Also, uh, some audio from him as well with Al John. So you've got that to look forward to. And I'm sure uh, for probably the WDW Tiki Room show this Friday on Sorcerer Radio, he will have a lot to talk about when it comes to the C2E2 uh, experience there in Chicago from this past weekend. So we definitely appreciate Al John taking the time to see all that stuff. Well, I'm sure it didn't. Well, you know, I'm sure he had a vested interest as well, but. enjoyed quite a bit you know so but um one of these days i'll get to go i keep saying that for different things but i will go one of these days yeah i I want to do it too yeah i I, yes we we need to do that you could come up here and just park the car and we just and and we just like you know we we drive it together be like be like Kermit and Fozzie in the Muppet movie. <laughs> that would be something. Except no Studebaker. Yeah, right. No kidding. No kidding. But uh, again, make sure you check out those bonus audio podcasts coming right here from WDW After Dark. And check out more information that he'll probably release this Friday on WDW Tiki Room Show over on Sorcerer Radio at 8 a.m. Eastern Time at SR Sounds. Dot com. Real quick, want to remind you, if you want to see Avengers Age of Ultron, I recommend go ahead right now, click on that Fandango link via WDWAfterDark.com. Get your tickets, guarantee your seat, so you get to see this fantastic movie that is coming out. Like, you know, Eric already told you, over 200 million has already been anything, whether it comes to books, if you need movies, if you're looking for audio books, so many other different things, you can check out Amazon. Amazon Amazon.com. We've got the link right there on the page. WDW After Dark. Check that out. Remember, if you click on these links, we get a little bit back that goes towards the show so that we can bring you this content each and every single week. And also, it's no extra cost to you. Doesn't cost you a thing. Not a single penny. It is free for you to click. That's all you have to do. And then also, if you're looking to take a vacation anytime soon, whether it be Walt Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line, Carnival, whatever it may be, make sure you head over to Magical Journeys Vacations. Kristen Hetzel will get you ready to go when it comes to getting your vacation planned, and you'll have a fantastic time. She will treat you right, and you don't have to stay on the phone for four hours (laughs) with people when you do it. (laughs) That's one of the best parts about it. You give her the information. She'll call you back or she'll email you back with all the information that you need. She does the footwork so that you don't have to. We also want to say thank you to our friends over at We Be Geeks Network. They're the ones who give us the opportunity to bring you this audio podcast. If you're listening to the audio version on iTunes and also Stitcher Radio, also in conjunction with Shot Glass Digital. So we want to thank them as well. Eric? Where can everybody find you if they don't already know, my dear Hunter? Well, sir, if you want to hear particularly Disney-centric stuff, then I would suggest you con- you look for me on Twitter at, at Sorcom Review or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Sorcom Review. If uh, you want uh, Marvel, Star Wars, and just, uh, you know, just pure random shenanigans, uh, it would be on Twitter at, at Uncle Servo. At Uncle Servo. All one word. All one word. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Thunder Beaver may have been taken already. I don't know. (laughs) It's a good possibility. Maybe, maybe not. You never know. May have to look for that. Yeah. Uh, If you need to get a hold of me, you can do so on Twitter at DW underscore 60. You know I'm on Sorcerer Radio on Thursday mornings. Uh, So check that out. I would appreciate if you uh, do give it a listen, if you have a request for a song. You know, I had a request from, I believe it was Ireland last week 
for the Is show. That not awesome. Isn't that weird? I mean, I, I realize that I know people in the states listen to it, but somebody from Ireland. Yes, it, we 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 make the joke here about trending world. My mind. Yeah, it's uh, it's but crazy. Yeah, it's it, it's awesome. It's crazy awesome, but it's awesome. It's awesome. Definitely, definitely. So we encourage you to listen to Sorcerer Radio over at srsounds.com anytime that you want to hear some fantastic Walt Disney World music. We are going to return next week with more travel news for Walt Disney World and Disneyland, Disney food news. We'll talk about Avengers, Age of Ultron, and a whole lot of other stuff. Maybe more Star Wars news to talk about, Marvel news. It just You never know what's going to happen on the show, but we encourage you to come back Watch the show over on YouTube or listen to the show via iTunes and Stitcher Radio. We definitely appreciate your support. Checking out those links, Amazon, Fandango, you know, Entertainment Earth, Halloween.com, all of that stuff. Check it out at www.afterdark.com. Eric, once again, thank you so much for taking out the time to spend with me this evening. Another Woody and Beave kind of version of the show. Oh, uh, yeah. Once again, always fun, man, and I definitely appreciate it. They're always fun. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it again. Trust me. <laughs> oh, yes, we will. <laughs> Eventually, we will be doing it again. But we do encourage you guys to come back again. You're watching this on YouTube. Hey, or if you're just listening, we encourage you spread the word about WDW After Dark. Hit that like button. Give us a review over on iTunes. Comment on our page over on YouTube. We definitely love to hear from you, your comments or anything else. We encourage the viewer and listener interaction. We want that. We want to hear what you think, you know, comments or anything else. So please just let us know and interact with us. Uh, however you watch or listen to the show, Eric, anything else before we go? Um, if you go somewhere to watch age of Ultron this weekend, do drive careful because, you know, there's always going to be people on the road that well, aren't watching where they're going. So, um, stay safe. Have a happy weekend. Absolutely. Again, thank you for watching the show. We will see you next week for another edition of WDW After Dark. Take care, everybody. Have a great week.